Hi everyone, my name is Peter Shields and on behalf of Airmet Scientific, I'm pleased to welcome you all to today's webinar. We're fortunate to have Dr. Stephanie Lynch, Product Manager from OHD Global, joining us today to present on the topic of respirator fit testing with controlled negative pressure. There's been so much interest in today's presentation. I guess COVID-19 has had a huge impact on all our lives and is another reminder of the importance of fit testing to protect our workers from exposure. So I'll now hand over to Dr. Lynch, who's kindly agreed to present on this topic today in her evening in the United States, so we could host this during Australian business hours. So over to you, Dr. Lynch. Good morning, everyone. So let's get my presentation rolling up here. So as Peter said, I'm Stephanie Lynch, and I'm the Industrial Hygiene Product Manager at OHD. Um, we're in Birmingham, Alabama, like I said, I'm in the States, and I'm so happy to be here and to have this opportunity. In today's webinar, we're going to discuss some respirator fit testing basics, and more specifically fit testing with the controlled negative pressure method that's utilized by the QuantiFit respirator fit tester. So let's start off with some background. A fit test, um, which shouldn't be confused with a flow test or a wear or seal check. Um, I'm not positive of this language in Australia. In the US, we call it a user seal check, and in the UK, it's a fit check. I believe wear or seal check is what I've seen in the Australian market. But anyway, a fit test is not those things. Um, it's the use of a protocol to qualitatively or quantitatively evaluate the fit of a respirator to an individual. And the purpose of a fit test is to ensure proper training and to also identify the specific make, model, style, size, everything about a respirator that makes it best suited for each employee. So why do we fit test? Well, we, of course, I'm sure, fit test to make sure our employees are protected. But in several countries, including Australia um, soon, uh, we are also regulated to do so. In the US where I am, our regulatory body OSHA requires fit testing, but several other national and international organizations require it also. Uh, ANSI, ISO, HSE in the UK, uh, just to name a few. Australia, I believe, is currently developing their, their fit testing specific uh, new regulation or either updating. Uh, I actually submitted my comments today. I imagine that's one other reason we might have some good turnout for this webinar. And for the record, I've tried to tailor this to my best guess as to what those requirements will be, but I don't actually know for sure. So I'm leaning heavily on the ISO standard as that's what was referenced in the document that was sent to me uh, for comments. So first off, when do we fit test? An initial fit test should take place before a respirator is in use, and that's sort of an ideal situation, uh, or when it's identified that an untested respirator is being used. So you should also do an initial test anytime the respirator model or style or size is changed. Uh, we've seen this come up a lot with the uh, COVID response that so if you're switching from, from one respirator brand because of the shortage to another, you know, do you have to be fit tested? Uh, typically, yes, a regulation will require you to do an initial fit test with that new mask, even if they are very similar. A repeat fit test should also take place on a schedule as regulated in the US, we require it at least annually, and this goes for ISO too. It's also important to retest any time significant changes happen uh, involving the face of the wearer. So if the wearer, uh, say, gains or loses um, 20 pounds or nine kilograms, if they experience facial or dental surgery, or if the wearer becomes significantly more uncomfortable in whatever assigned respiratory protection they're currently wearing, that discomfort can be a sign of um, missizing or uh, just something going wrong. So that's a good time to also retest. The use of respiratory protection also typically requires some kind of 
medical clearance. This is meant to make sure that the wearer is healthy enough to wear a respirator. Because a respirator increases resistance to breathing, this is going to place an extra strain on the wearer's physical, so on their lungs, their physical capabilities. And going through a medical evaluation is going to help ensure that the wearer is healthy enough to use a respirator and that respirator isn't going to create its own hazard, right? We would never want to do that when we're implementing, especially something that's meant for health and safety. Talk about our personal protective equipment. One aspect of fit testing includes that in, like employees are properly trained on the use of their respiratory protection. Um, usually these are outlined pretty well in a regulation, but it typically includes a working knowledge of the hazards that they are protecting against and also how to use their respirator, including how to put it on and take it off appropriately. They should also be able to perform a wearer seal check so wearer seal checks can be performed qualitatively uh, under both positive pressure or negative pressure or quantitatively. And there's actually a new device called the QuantiCheck, which is going to measure pressure decay in your respirator to provide to quantify that seal check to to really challenge that seal. And that's something that um, AirMed is going to be doing and, and me are going to be doing a presentation on next month. And that's a picture of it in that bottom right-hand corner. So when we talk about fit testing, there are two main types. There's qualitative fit testing. And qualitative fit testing is a pass-fail test method. It's going to use your sense of taste or smell or how you react to an irritant in order to detect leakage into the respirator face piece. So Qualitative fit testing does not actually measure the any amount of leakage, but whether the respirator passes or fails the test is based simply on the wearer's detection of leakage in, of the test substance into their face piece. There are three qualitative methods that are currently accepted by ISO. So there's banana oil, so isoamyl acetate, which smells like bananas. Then there's saccharin, which is going to leave uh, a sweet taste in your mouth, and bitrix, which leaves a bitter taste in your mouth. Um, a fourth qualitative method, irritant smoke, is allowed by some regulatory bodies, but not currently allowed by ISO, so I'm sort of assuming it won't be included in the Australian market. But qualitative fit testing is normally used for half-mask respirators, and those are the ones that just cover your nose and mouth. And this includes the half mask respirators that are the filtering face piece disposable respirators, as well as elastomeric respirators, half mask respirators. And so those can typically be um, tested with the pass fail method that qualitative fit testing allows for. And then the other method is quantitative fit testing. And it uses a machine to measure the actual amount of leakage or some indirect measurement of the actual amount of leakage into the face piece. And it doesn't rely on the wearer's sense of taste or smell or um, indication of irritation in order to detect that leakage. The respirators used during this type of fit testing are going to have an adapter or a probe that's gonna to attach to the face piece that will be connected to the machine with a tube or hose. And there are three quantitative fit test methods that are currently accepted by ISO. There's controlled negative pressure, those, there's ambient aerosol condensation nuclei counting, uh, CNC, and then generated aerosol. And quantitative fit testing can be used for any type of tight fitting respirator the whole gambit is just going to provide you with an actual number. When we talk about quantitative fit testing, it's going to get to down to two methods that are typically used. Generated aerosol, that third method, requires a chamber, and it's not very common to see it used outside of research. The two commonly used types of quantitative fit testing are controlled negative pressure, which is CNP, and then the ambient aerosol condensation nuclei counting, 
which is CNC. So CMP fit testing is performed with the OHD QuantiFit testing instrument, and it's gonna use controlled negative pressure to directly measure respirator leakage. CMP precisely measures the leak rate, and that's gonna be in cc's per minute, by determining the amount of air that's leaking into the respirator during each test exercise, and air is used as the challenge agent. With CNC, the fit testing is carried out by probing the face piece and taking alternating measurements of the ambient aerosol concentration under the mask and outside of the mask. Uh, that, that aerosol can be artificially created for testing if natural particle counts are too low in whatever test area you might use. And then the ratio of the external particles counted to the particles counted under the mask determine their fit factor. When we talk about qualitative methods, sort of um, benefits or down, downfalls, downsides, the quanti qualitative methods of fit tests are something that's more commonly used for filtering face piece respirators or for disposable respirators, or when you have a really small number of respirator users to fit. Uh, this method is only appropriate for those filtering face piece respirators up to the half mask elastomeric respirators. And it's not typically allowable uh, from a regulatory standpoint for higher levels of respiratory protection. And that's because it only uh, provides that subjective based 100 pass fail mark. Um, qualitative methods are relatively inexpensive and they require very little maintenance. However, because they rely on the wearer response, they are also subjective and people can sometimes cheat. When passing a fit test is made a requirement for employment and the wearer perceives their own um, risk to be low, they sometimes just want to get it over with. Uh, I'm sure this wouldn't be the case today, but I saw a lot of this in the hospital setting about 15 years ago when I was working um, for a hospital here in Birmingham, Alabama, where all the doctors and nurses, although they're not encountering a lot of tuberculosis patients, which is what we were mainly fit testing for, um, they would knew that they had to pass to be able to keep working in their jobs. And so they would just come down, they knew the answers to the questions and they would just roll right, right through, which is not what we want. So we had to develop little ways to kind of um, trick the different testees, which is, getting into a whole nother thing. But so qualitative definitely has a few downsides. And as I mentioned, it then can't be used on any of the respirators that require a higher pass value than just that subjective 100 pass fail, which is typically all the full face respirators. So quantitative methods, as I mentioned, are typically gonna be required for your respiratory protection with your higher level assigned protection factors. So full face and higher. And they're also often used in situations where you're gonna to have to fit test a lot of people because they're typically much faster. Quantitative fit test methods store fit test records and print the certificates. And this is gonna allow for easy record keeping. So that's another benefit when you have a, a lot of people to fit test, keeping all of that stuff straight. They're objective and relatively fast, as I mentioned. Um, on the downside, they are more expensive and every method of quantitative fit testing is going to require some annual maintenance, uh, which of course is also gonna cost time and money. So now I want to sort of dive into what I know best, which is the control negative pressure method of quantitative fit testing. So CNP is the patented fit test technology that's applied by the OHD QuantiFit, it's gonna utilize negative pressure as a direct measure of respirator leakage. As I already mentioned, we use air as the challenge agent. And simply put, that means that when the QuantiFit is gonna create and maintain a controlled negative pressure that's mimicking a continuous inhale of an average human working at a moderate rate, it's creating an environment that's going to have 
septillions of air molecules fighting to get into the mask in any way possible because air is going to take that path of least resistance, right? So to create and maintain a negative pressure, your wearer is going to take a comfortable breath and hold, and the adapter valve is going to close the seal to the respirator. This is currently accomplished with the trigger button on the QuantiFit. And then the QuantiFit is going to pull out the air until it reaches a set challenge pressure. And that challenge pressure is associated with the breathing rate. It's going to do this within the respirator. If no leak were to be detected, then that pressure would simply remain constant. If leak is detected, then the QuantiFit is going to work to remove the air until that challenge pressure within the respirator is achieved again. So it's going to do this for eight seconds, constantly compensating for that leak. And during that eight seconds, it's track, tracking the exact amount of air that it has removed. This is how it's going to calculate a leak rate. And this is what makes it a direct measurement of leak. So our triple tube assembly, which hopefully you can see in the diagram, uh, has one line that seals off the adapter. It's going to seal off those adapter breathing ports. And then a dual tube where one side is going to be measuring any of the air that's leaking into the mask and the other side is evacuating that leak air to maintain that negative pressure within the respirator, tracking that exact amount of leakage. So when we talked about quantitative fit testing, one aspect of that is, so you're not just doing that subjective pass-fail level, you're gonna be provided with a fit factor. And this is a value that's gonna be compared to a regulated reference pass value. The QuantiFit, in our case for CMP, converts the leak rate that it's measured into a fit factor. And to do this, it's going to take our modeled breathing rate that's based on that inhale of an average worker working at its moderate rate and divides it by the measured leak rate, that amount of leak that it measured coming out of the respirator. This is how you get each individual exercise's fit factor. Another way to look at this is that it's then going to be the ratio of the total air inhaled to the possibly contaminated or unfiltered air that would be inhaled by the wearer. Just as an example, and I made it rather easy, but this is how our individual exercise fit factors are calculated. Our breathing rates are expressed in liters per minute, but the leak rates are expressed in cubic centimeters per minute. And this is simply to use the units that make the numbers most easily understood. We wouldn't want to be talking about breathing rates in the tens and th tens of thousands of cc's per minute, nor would we want to talk about leak rates in the thousands, th thousands of liters per minute. So for some easy math, I've used the model breathing rate that we use for what is our most common protocol, which we'll see a little bit later, our read-on protocol and a leak rate of 53.8 cc's per minute. So in this scenario, the quantifit for this exercise would show a 1,000 fit factor for this particular exercise, which would then be, well, this is an individual exercise, but so after you've gone through the whole protocol, you would be able to compare that fit factor, that would be a pass, and you would be able to compare that back to the value, which typically for a full face is gonna be a 500 fit factor. That does vary a little bit across the regulations, but for ISO and OSHA, it's that 500 value. So just as a comparison, for individual exercise fit factors measured by CNC, so that ambient aerosol condensation nuclei counting method, they're gonna sample the ambient environment and the in-mask environment for ambient particles that are in the air, and they're gonna create a ratio from that. The concentration of the particles counted outside the mask are going to be divided by the particle concentration counted inside the mask and that's where they get their individual exercises fit factors this is actually where some people can get confused about the different quantitative fit testing fit factors because once the individual fit test exercise fit factors for each respective method are calculated in their very different ways. 
based on very different technology, all of these methods then use a harmonic mean to establish the overall fit factor. And so a harmonic mean is a type of average. They're used in mathematics to make it easier to know the value of one thing from or to another. Because fit factors are meant to be compared back to that required or regulated pass value, this comes in very useful. Also because they should be conservative from a health protection standpoint, right? We would much, much rather be conservative when we're talking about the fit of a respirator for that health protection value. It's useful to utilize a harmonic, harmonic mean because a harmonic mean places greater weight on lower values. So as an example, in this, if you took a preliminary look at those fit factors for individual exercises and you added them up and got an average, that preliminary look would give you an average of 1,000. But the overall fit factor is only going to be an 862. This is because of the use of a harmonic mean as opposed to that straight average. And this is going to allow for, well, first off, harmonic means are just what you typically would use when you're looking at ratios, but this allows for fit factors to be more conservative in their estimation of fit, which is good from that health protection standpoint. So I've talked about the protocols and how methods have individual exercises that are providing fit factors. So this is our, or uh, CMPs, most commonly used protocol. It has five steps or exercises, and it takes an experienced respirator user about two minutes. So when we talk about that time difference for a qualitative method of fit testing, I would say per wearer, you're looking at about 15 minutes. Um, so the read-on protocol is much quicker, and most of the quantitative methods are are going to be much quicker than those that qualitative style of fit testing. But the read-on protocol is also, uh, in my opinion, the most health protective protocol available because it's going to require that wearer to perform three donnings, so your initial donning, and then our step four and five are other donnings. And respirator donning has been shown to have more impact on fit than any single exercise. I also believe that that consistent donning and doffing is also a really good indicator of effective training on the use of a respirator. So if you're able to show that you can put it on and take it off repeatedly um, and pass every time, you're, you're showing some competence and the ability to don and doff your respirator. Uh, the other steps, so for that first one, after that initial donning, you're just facing forward. For that second step, you're going to be bending over, and that's just looking at the impact of gravity on, on your respirator. And then for that third step, you're going to shake your head and uh, shout, and that's to test the ability of that respirator to reseat. And then you've got those two following read-ons. So this was all uh, just looking at controlled negative pressure and a little bit of the background on fit testing. And I hope that you found it uh, helpful and informative. Um, we're trying to look at maybe the process, a little bit of regulation, especially within the controlled negative pressure method. And I really appreciate everyone's time and attention. Thanks everyone for attending today. If you have any further questions on the OHD product range or anything that was discussed today, please feel free to contact any of your AMET representatives. Sincere thanks to Dr. Lynch for your time today. Very relevant, informative and interesting presentation. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Thank you so much.